Hello everyone, uh, today I'm going to walk through the basic installation for an SP1250LX. Uh, on the table here we have basically what comes in the box. You got the, you know, the main UPS, uh, you got the uh, battery cable, you got the uh, cable for the dry contact closures on the front panel, a communication cable, the uh, generator, we call it dongle, uh, for a bypass box if it does have a generator input, and the bypass box itself. Um, a couple things about the bypass box. Um, there are four versions of this, and it's an SPD302, and, the, the, and that's the basic version, and there's also an A and a B and a C, and the A has the um, generator input, which is behind the cover plate here, and the B has the GFI receptacle, and the C has both of them, and that's the differences uh, uh, between the, the four different uh, models of that. So uh, we have a cabinet over here, and we have uh, most of the stuff installed already. Um, the, in this particular cabinet, obviously the bypass box mounts up here. Um, the bypass box, uh, unlike the older SP-1000, uh, you need to break hot and neutral. So normally your utility that comes in out of the ground or wherever, the first place it's going to go is to the bypass box here, um, you know, hot and neutral utility in, and then the output to the cabinet is going to go to where you would normally feed utility uh, on the cabinet. So once you get that in, and we've just got this, you know, going to a cheater cord and plugged into the wall. Um, this, uh, the cable for the UPS, you know, is, is pre-installed, um, so it's pretty, uh, you know, simple at that point. Um, in fact, before I do that, let me uh, talk about the batteries for a second. Um, the batteries, the, the, uh, the uh, cable on the battery um, is designed to extend out longer on one end of the battery. So if you just make note of that and you put the batteries in in a particular direction so you have a little more slack on the cable and it's easier to access it when everything's on the shelf. And one thing that you want to do that we recommend is after you plug everything in is insert a tie wrap uh, around that connector like that. And it just keeps, um, you know, if you're troubleshooting or you're pulling other wires or doing anything in the cabinet and moving stuff around, it keeps one of these from getting dislodged. Um, this happens to be a 1250, so it's a 72 volt system. All the batteries are in series. If any one of these gets disconnected, the whole battery string is open. So, and if you don't catch it, then when you have an outage, uh, it's not going to back you up. So we recommend doing that. Um, the next thing is, any of you that have installed one of these, you have probably noticed that it is, this connector is uh, um, tight to push in. And um, we'll talk more about that later. Um, but if uh, I would recommend getting a, a can of, uh, of uh, any type of, of a silicone uh, a spray, and don't spray it in the unit, but you can spray it on the connector, and it just makes... Uh, inserting that connector easier, especially if you're doing a lot in a day. Uh, a little bit easier on the hand. Plug the battery connector in. You'll notice um, we get a lot of, of uh, calls and even when we go out in the field we see a lot of cases where this connector isn't seated all the way. And the one easy way to tell is if you look at the distance between the connector um, here and the battery connector, this connector, the, the, the input-output connector, is about an eighth of an inch in further than the battery connector. If they're flush, this guy's not seated all the way. And if it's not seated all the way, it can cause a whole host of, of problems, uh, depending on which one of these connections is intermittently making contact. So with both of those plugged in, and then in this particular cabinet, um, and I'm not sure about some other cabinets, uh, but there's a, uh, a, a cable here that, that plugs in for our fan that converts it to an IEC connector so that you can plug that into the front of the unit here. And since we're all plugged in, I don't know if you can hear that, the cabinet fan just started running because we've already got 
power going to the bypass box. Um, so even though the unit's off, uh, there's internal uh, automatic bypass, so it's feeding utility power to the output. So then you want to make sure that the DC circuit breaker is on behind the switch guard. Uh, we run across that also where, where that's, you know, been overlooked. And turn the system switch on. And uh, she boots up and shows that in the normal mode, uh, utility uh, voltage, output voltage, um, status of the relay contacts, and the status of the unit in general is okay, and your battery voltage and battery uh, uh, percentage. Uh, going back to the bypass box for a moment, when the, when the bypass switch is in bypass, it removes utility power from the input of the unit. So it automatically puts the unit in backup mode, running on batteries, but it also removes the load from the unit. So the unit's just sitting there idling with no load on it, running on batteries. So it's normal for it to say input bad or AC line bad anytime you're in the bypass mode. And switch that back and it reapplies AC power and switches back over to a normal after uh, about four or five seconds.